he feeds you up there in San Francisco? Anyhow, little Joe, two months and you're skinny as ever. Yeah, a little uglier, maybe, huh? And a little bit smarter. I got five dollars more head this year than you did last year. Hey, you hear that, Adam? I think that calls for a celebration. Yeah, you know, I think it's time little Joe took a look inside Julia's palace, huh? Uh, Adam, I said a little celebration. <laughs> It's a fair fight, at least as fair as it could be with John Mullane. He's not hurt too bad. Come on, let's get him up to the Doc Martens. Every day you're more like a mad dog. Now, you will not provoke any more violence in my place. Do you understand that? It is amazing to me, my dear Julia, how such tender sentiments can come from trash like you. Welcome to Julia's palace, Mr. Um... Cartwright, Joe Cartwright. Oh, one of the Cartwrights from the Ponderosa? Yes, ma'am. This is a real nice place you've got here. I'm sorry I messed it up. Oh, don't be sorry. After all, you were defending my honor. I've never been here before. Oh, you must come back sometime. I'd like that. As my guest. I'm Julia Bulet. I'd, uh, I'd like to repay you. Dinner here at my place. Tomorrow night? Yes, ma'am. Better get the brandy, Tom. Uh, we are of the same kind, you and I, Julie. Women are concerned we are the messengers of destruction. You do it through the heart, I do it with the gun. Does it matter to you which way it happens to this young man? Hmm? Pa, you think Julia Bulette might have known my mother? No, I, I don't think that's very likely. Yeah, why not? They both lived in New Orleans. Yeah, they might just as well have lived on opposite sides of the world. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, what I've been trying to say is that... the only thing that Julia Bulette has in common with your mother the fact that she's a woman. And yeah, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Yeah, she's a very beautiful woman. Well, come on, Pa. You better hurry up. You want to get that town meeting on time. Come on. This is a meeting that will be attended by Virginia City's leading citizens. Now, uh, sure you don't want to come along? I know, thanks, Pa. I, uh, I got some other plans. May I? Miss Pulette? Why so formal, Ben? It used to be Julia. Get up! I'm sorry. Shall Julie. we go in? Well, I... Oh, yes, I've been asked. My invitation said it was supposed to be a meeting of the leading citizens of Virginia City. What did yours say? Well, uh, mine said the same. Shall we proceed? Well, 
looks like everybody's here that's going to show up, so we might as well get things underway. And I guess we all know why we're here, too. Under the ground of Virginia City lies the greatest bonanza of silver known to man. Most of what's on top, though, is nothing more than trash. The first thing to do is among ourselves, by bringing in effective law and order. Now, starting with effective law and order, we'll have to raise a permanent city fund to interest the kind of men that we want. Ben, can we expect help from the ranchers? Well, the ranchers want law and order in town just as much as everybody else. Of course, we'll do all we can, but uh, I don't think that'll be, that'll be enough. Yes, I realize that. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that brings me to... Uh... That brings you to why I was invited here? The uh, kind of money you'll need will have to come from the people who mostly make up this town. The men who work in the mines. They will listen to Julia Bulette. So, gentlemen, I'll take care of raising the money and uh, the moralizing I'll leave to you. Oh, I know you'd love for me to stay, but I do have a saloon to run. as well as an appointment to keep. Friends, there's a rumor around that we have a very wicked town here in Virginia City. <laughs> <laughs> so while the blue noses sit up on the hill and cry about it, I think we down here on C Street can do something about it. Here, here. Now, the first thing Virginia City will need will be a little money in its pocket. I'm going to make the first donation. Tom, get me a bottle of brandy. Mm -hmm. A bottle of brandy. Now, how much are you willing to give this fine old Virginia City brandy? One hundred dollars. One hundred dollars? This is Julia's Palace, not another saloon. Now, come on, let me hear a respectable bid. Two hundred and fifty dollars. Three hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. <laughs> so, Julia Bulet, five hundred dollars. Now I'm giving it right back to Virginia City. Yes. Who's next? Two hundred dollars. Two hundred and fifty? Three hundred dollars. Oh, come on now. Three hundred and fifty. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars sold to little Joe Cartwright of Ponderosa. And I give it back to Virginia City, too. All right, that starts the open bidding over again. Gladys, come on up here. Make them pay till it hurts. Come on, little Joe. Okay, fellas, what am I bid? Sally, we're going to need something to put all this money in. Oh, that's going to be fine, thanks. So, one, two, three, four, five. I, I don't carry that kind of money on me. Can oh. I give you a note for it? No. You saved my honor, I'll save yours. Now we're even. <laughs> oh, your daddy forgot to give you your allowance, huh? Look, Mulane, just because you shot up a few miners, that makes you the most feared man in town. I'm not shaking even a little bit, so don't get in my way. You don't think I can make you shake like the others, huh? I think you only stay alive because no grave will have you. I think you'd better go. You were uh, going outside, my friend? Uh, fine. No, he's, he's going with me. Monsieur? Some other time. That is a promise. From me. Comfortable. I'll fix us a brandy. No, thanks. Oh, you drink so little. Gamble even less. You know, it's a good thing the finer side of a man burns out in his youth, or I'd be out of business. Well, I hope you stay in business a long time. I'd hate to see you leave here. There are not many around here who would agree with you. Well, they snub you on Sunday and come to your place on Monday. The world's better off without that kind of hypocrite. Don't try to change the world, little Joe. Enjoy it the way it is. You'll grow older and then you'll be no different from all the others. I'm sorry about that. Eh? Oh. Could have had your pick of any man in Virginia City. Why'd you ask me here? John Milan might have killed you. Judy, just to break up a fight was... 
Is that the only reason you asked me up here? It was then. Is anything wrong? Mm, no, quite the contrary. You know, you remind me of what I always pictured my mother would look like. Mm. She was part French like you, came from New Orleans. And she was a very beautiful woman. <laughs> All right. Tell me about New Orleans. <laughs> I'm afraid it wouldn't be as your mother saw it. From different sides, a mountain never looks the same. I don't understand. You will. Goodbye, little Joe. Go home where you belong. Coming back. And now for that little promise, huh? Just relax, Mulane. I believe I'd do like he says if I was you. Me and Adam figured you boys would be about ready to settle something. Now, why don't you settle it like gentlemen? A horse will hold your coat. Once I've told him a thousand times to keep those elbows in. A couple of beers, Tom. Kid's got lots of grip. One of these days, he's going to be able to whoop that Frenchman. Yeah, but this wasn't the day. Tom? Come on. Thank you, Tom. We'll see you. All right, huh? Come down from the mines at Gold Hill. Oh, how are things down there? Ran into a few cases of fever. Fever? Was it bad? Well, it's hard to say if they'll build up to epidemic proportions. So far, just a few scattered cases here and there. Oh, I'm glad of that. You're looking well, Ben. Feel wonderful. Never felt better. Good. You've come a long way. This house, Ponderosa, three fine sons. Now, Doc. A man with all the work you've got to do wouldn't take a long ride just to talk old time. Now sit down. Have a little refreshment. Well? Hob Singh? How about a little cool water from that good well of yours? All right. Yes, sir, Mr. Cudlai. Glass of cool water for Dr. Martin. Yes, sir. Lie away. Now then, what's in your mind? Well, for one thing, the committee wanted you to know we received a letter of acceptance from Brad Olins. Oh, that's fine. Olins is one of the best. Yes. I only hope we can keep him. No. What's to stop us? Well, money for one thing. Oh, Miss Bulette's bottle of brandy got us off to a fine start. But it can't stop there. We've got to have the cooperation of the people. I sure hope we get all the cooperation we need. Ben, you know that most of the people of a community keep in step with the leaders. All right. All right, Doc, keep talking. Well, 
I just don't know any other way to say it. People of the town are talking about little Joan. Miss Bulette. Now, matters concerning my sons and myself are nobody's business but our own. No longer, Ben. It boils down to this. If Virginia City will keep her house clean, she has a chance to become an important part of this country. If she doesn't, she'll stay just a dirty little town on a mountain. I'll talk to Julia Doc. Brandy Ben, I promise you it's the very best. I'm sure it is, Julia, but uh, no thanks. And mm. finding out the Cartwrights aren't much of a drinking family. No, that's true, but uh, very much a family. Go on. Well, Julia, you know, the boy's young. He's, uh, he's full of life. Well, I can understand how he could appeal to you. It has. Yeah, with you, this is a... This is a passing thing. It's different for little Joe. Different how? Did he ever tell you about his mother? Yes. He never really knew her. She died when he was... He was very young. Now, you were the only other woman of French ancestry he's ever known. That and the fact that you also come from New Orleans... Well, makes you something special in his eyes. <laughs> But not in yours. No, I guess not. Have you told little Joe to stay away from me? No. I prefer him to hear it from you. And just what is it you'd uh, like him to hear from me? Well, the difference in your ages, your ways of life. You... Not to mention uh, the fact that the whole town is talking about us and what that could do to a young man's reputation. Yes. Is that too? Mm -hmm. I'll think about it, Ben. Julia, you're wonderful. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> you know, this really will be best for you, for everybody. Little Joe, uh, where have you been? Virginia City. Ran into Doc Martin. There's several more cases of fever. He's getting real worried. Oh, Joe, I've been uh, been waiting here to talk to you. Oh, what about? You've been with that woman again. Her name is Miss Bulette. Now, Joe, you're a, you're a grown man, and I, I know you'll understand what I'm going to say to you. I know already. Pa, she's not the kind of woman that people say she is. Not anymore, anyway. Well, look, I know she she wears fine clothes and she talks good and she lives well, but, you know, a, a scar doesn't disappear just because you wash it. I guess that's how it was with my mother. Keep your mother out of this. I've heard you and Adam talk how there were places you couldn't go, things you couldn't do because... Because she was part Creole. It was a language the ways of a people that some folks didn't understand. Nothing more. I know that. And still, there were a lot of people that hated her. Well, sometimes I see a scar, you know, you gotta be looking for it. Little Joe, I... No, thank you, Huffing. I won't no more. Only one piece cake? This dang cake's flat. The cake is not flat. For two days now, whole land is flat. No fun, nobody eat, no good without little Joe. I just talked to Charlie. He's been in town. Seems the kid's having himself quite a time with Miss Bulette. They've been seen just about everywhere. You must be enjoying this. You know, it's doing something for little Joe. Defending somebody he feels close to, he'll get over it. You think so? Well, let him find somebody else to defend. I'm not going to have that woman beating me over the head with my own son. And we're going to bring little Joe back in town if we have to drag him every step of the way. Well, he's 
got in there. Let's move on. Well, he shouldn't be too hard to find. ashamed of yourself. You certainly should be. What for? For protecting my boy when the whole mob is trying to take him apart? Well, what that mob was doing to your boy is nothing compared to what he did to the inside of my opera house. He wrecked it. Take a whole week to put it back together again, and it was nothing but uncalled for violence. Uncalled for? What do you call what you did to Miss Boulette? Now, wait a minute. What's all this about? Perhaps I can explain. I have a box loge in this theater. Mr. Romley had it draped so it would be separated from the others a new policy of the management. I accepted it, but my escort didn't. Well, with the district judge and, and the new marshal coming in a couple of weeks, uh, the committee... Ben, you know what I mean. Let's go. Let me know how much the damages will be. Now you're coming home with us. You can make me go home, but you can't make me stay there. All I want is a chance to decide a few things for myself. I'll get the carriage. Now why do you have to fight me and the town using a boy as a weapon? It's the only weapon I can use against you and win. It's quite a victory, isn't it? Ben Cartwright's son, Defending the honor of Judy Bullet. It's even more of a victory. I have the help of his father. Ben! Oh, Ben! The fever is not an isolated thing any longer. It's all over Gold Hill. And it is an epidemic. We'll be in Virginia City by morning. Chances are it's the water. There's plenty of pure water in the Ponderosa. Adam Hoss, get the hands together in the ranch and get some water down here. Yes, sir. All right now, folks, I'll need all the help I can get. Beds for the patients, men to transport them, and women to tend them. What I need is good water, shelter, and volunteers. Now, who'll be next? The palace will be set up for anything you need right away. Well, thank you, Julie. All right, who else? Ye shall keep all my statutes so the land shall not spew you out. Well, the Lord was talking to Moses, not to Virginia City. He taught me that that meant everyone. So what's happened to the good people in this town? They're about to go to work, little Joe. Julia, don't bother moving those gambling tables. They'll do nicely as beds. All right, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, you wrestle up enough strength to take this medicine, and I'll... Uh... Let you take advantage of my good nature. <laughs> well, we're saving two for everyone we're losing. An epidemic like this, that's a victory. Well, those that are healthy are beginning to leave this town in droves. Just a dirty little town on a mountain. I guess that's all we were meant to be. But if to change it means crucifying people like her, I say it's not worth it. Hey, Doc, I got you three more volunteers. Oh, good. Oh, Pete, I thought you and your crew were pulling out. Well, maybe it's like little Joe says, Doc. It's our mountain. We dug right under insides with a little more than our bare hands. Well, it, it ain't decent to let some stinking thing like a fever chase us off. Mr. Carr's right there. I can show you plenty to do. You come with me, Pete. Joe, I've got something for you to do. Take a break. No, Doc, there's still a lot of work to be done. That goes for Julia, too. You two have been working for days. I need help, not new patients. You do as you're told.
We've been asleep a long time. Yeah, I dreamt I was in New Orleans. Yeah, it was a beautiful place. Virginia City's a long way from New Orleans. I'm gonna go there someday. Maybe to live. This is where you'll stay. No, a man goes where he wants to be. I've watched the way you handle people here. Man stays where he's needed. And you? When the town starts to grow, I look for a new frontier. Julie, it doesn't have to be this way. I get. Your mother was French. Do you understand the language? Some of it. Cela aurait dû arriver il y a des années. This should have happened many years ago. <laughs> Someday you'll know what I mean. You'll also know why you must stay and I must go. We'll be needed inside. You know, I think you're going to make it. Oh? Huh? Well, I checked most of the mines. And there's not one new case of fever, Doc. More oh. than half the men have gone back to work. Ah, good. Then we'll move the last of our patients over to the meeting house. <laughs> Boys, let's move these blankets and beds over to the meeting house. Well... It was a fight, Adam, but it's the kind of fight that's good to win. Well, we uh, lost one, too, Pa. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, little Joe came back to the ranch this morning and he took his things. Now that uh, this is over, uh, Julia, this, uh, this thing with little Joe, I should never have interfered. Oh, I'm disappointed in you, Ben. Disappointed? A man of strength should never let sentiment interfere with his convictions. I'm the same woman I was before the fever. Well, I haven't changed either. And nothing has changed between us, but I... I won't gamble with something I can't replace. If it's Little Joe's wish, you're welcome to become part of the Ponderosa. That's quite an offer. Especially since you don't think I'm good enough for it. Whether or not you're good enough for Little Joe is, is something only you can decide. some champagne. Harry, let me have a tune, a lovely one. As soon as the patients are moved, uh, I want you to clear out this mess and put the gambling table back in their places. I'm going to put on a night Virginia City will never forget. Well, after the fever, that should be a great celebration. Celebration? Who said anything about a celebration? This is going to be an execution. Julia Bulette. Destroying the sweet innocence of youth. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? I'm having fun. You call this fun? You're acting like a... Go ahead, little Joe. Say it. Mr. Cartwright, I think I've told you to stay away from Julia Bullet. It has been a short life for you, my friend. 
Let us hope it has been a pleasant one. John, listen. I listen. I listen about this important thing I must do for you in Sacramento City. And I discover it is something which could have been handled by mail. John, please, don't, John. Julia, you all right? It isn't a bad one, more, Sherry. Go upstairs. I'll, I'll fix it. Julia? Leave me alone. Julia, I did this for you. You want to do something for me? This bracelet, the necklace, they arrived today. A present from an old friend. They're diamonds, little Joe. That's all any man can do for me. No, you don't mean that. Why shouldn't I? That door you came through, it works both ways. I think you'd better use it. Yes, Julie. You destroy with a heart. Hmm? I used to wonder why it was I'd send you away and then be so happy when you came back. Perhaps it is because we are cut from the same piece of cloth. Perhaps it's because in order to hate you, I had to hate myself. As you said, we are very much alike. One cannot change this, Julie. One can try. I don't want to see you anymore, John. <laughs> you have said this before. I never meant it before. We have been together too long, Julie. We have no escape one from the other. Goodbye, John. Julie. I have little which belongs to me. But what I have, no one will take away. No one. Little Joel, we heard what happened over to the palace. You shouldn't have taken on Malane alone. Well, I beat him, didn't I? Little Joe, they, they're having the fanciest meeting you ever seen over at the community hall. Everybody's patting each other on the back for stopping that epidemic. Paul's right up there on stage with them. He's going to make a speech. Now, you wouldn't want to miss Paul making a speech, would you? Everybody's patting everybody on the back, huh? Well, it's a real fine meeting. Come on, Joe. No, you know, you're right. I wouldn't want to miss it. As nobody, Virginia City has a right to thank more than Ben Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. Romney. If we've done anything... Yes, sir, you... boy. Thank you, Mr. Romney. Oh, and thanks to you, too, Doc Martin. And I want to give a special thanks to all you honorable citizens. But how about giving a little thanks to the person who did the most to save this stinking town? How about some thanks for Julia Bulette? But what's the matter? Don't you have the guts to admit when you're wrong? Well, Virginia City's fire engine company's been needing an honorary member. How about it, boys? Well, the lady isn't going to know anything about it until we tell her. Come on! Joe, it, it was you who got us here, so you ought to be the one to say it. Well, this isn't just for what you did for Virginia City during the epidemic. Well, it's for all the things you've done for everyone in this town. That's right. It's not a diamond necklace or a bottle of champagne, but it's the best we've got. What do you say, boys? 
Three cheers for the first honorary member of Virginia City's Fire Engine Company number two. There's no diamond necklace that goes with this either, but I'd be especially proud if you'd consent to be my wife. What Miss Bulette is trying to say is, champagne on the house. Let's get out. <laughs> Having faith in no one carries a special kind of security. You and your son have destroyed it. I'll never forgive you that, Lynn. Cartwright, this is Brad Olin. Howdy. Well, howdy. Nice to meet you. You got in with a new judge, so we swore him in right away. Well, there's some nice things about you. Nice to have you with us. It's my son, Joseph. How do you do? How are you? You're uh, about a week early, aren't you? Oh, a week early, but a day late. Oh? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Julia Bulette was knifed and robbed last night. How is she? It's bad. Doc Martin's with her. A couple of miners saw a tall, dark man coming out of her place just about daybreak. John Mullane. Oh, that's the name. We followed him up this way. He's probably headed for Lakes Crossing. Me and Adam will show you the way. Oh, that's fine. Boy, you better get going. Oh, Joe. Miss Bulett sent word she'd like to see you and your dad. Ben. You've been asleep a long time. Looks like I win a battle and lose the war. I'm sorry. Everyone is. Everyone? Mm. If New Orleans could only see me now, huh? Little Joe. He's here. I want to see him, Ben. Ben? Last night, you and the rest of Virginia City gave me a present. Now it's my turn. I'm going to give you back your son. Get me some brandy, Joe. I shouldn't be giving this to you. No. Oh, this is the way I live, kid. <laughs> Are you gonna be all right? I don't care. Couldn't have happened at a better time if I'd lived to be a thousand. <laughs> we beat him, Joe. We beat the apple knockers. What? <laughs> the high and mighty blue noses. We took them for the ride of their lives. <laughs> that play of yours. Bringing them in to lick my shoes just when they were ripe. <laughs> they meant every word of that. Sure they meant it makes it so rich. <laughs> They'll hear me laugh, laughing every time they pass my gra grave. <laughs> the 
biggest laugh of all. <laughs> Your old man. That night you were up here. I told you it was just for laughs, remember? I never intended to see you again. I never wanted to see you again. Better go, Joe. The doctor wants me to rest. I'm coming back. Diamonds in his saddlebags. <laughs> 